Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Board Masters with me, Chris Mullins, and today I want to talk about my favourite video games that feel like board games, so aren't ones that, to my knowledge, are based on board games. I think a few of them have had board game adaptations of them. And now obviously, depending how far you want to take this, there are countless games that are inspired by board games, especially if you include Dungeons and Dragons, because, you know, so pretty much anything with a fancy setting or any role player or anything with hidden dice rolls could be attributed to that. So I'm going to kind of skip over some of the most obvious ones, like perhaps XCOM, for me, is one of my favourite games of all time. But obviously very, very popular and very well known. So, And some of these games that I list may be more well known than I think, but I like to think they're a bit more of the non-traditional ones, so I look forward to listing those. I will be overlaying some of my footage that I've recorded on the relevant games as well, so hopefully... It'll be a bit more visually interesting, it won't just be me talking to you as such. Uh, Timestamps will be down below because I want to do a quick update before I get into everything. And you may or may not have seen last week I did an update where I talked about the channel where I was going to slow down the number of videos I was going to do a week. Since then this will be only the second video I will have uploaded. I didn't intend to slow down this much. Unfortunately, yesterday, so Thursday, when you when this goes up, uh, Thursday I got a positive result back for COVID, which obviously means Chris can't come round. Stace at the moment and Alex are both negative, thankfully, so obviously I can't play games with them. And because Stace is high risk and spent most of the past eighteen months isolating. I don't want to be borrowing her phone to record unboxings and gameplays because I don't want to risk contaminating her with her device. So, yeah, the next week especially is going to be much slower. I've got a gameplay of Roll Camera I can upload over the weekend. I've got next week's Legendary that I just need to update or edit, sorry. And then there might be, a, I'm going to try and do a couple more lists with Chris over Zoom. I'm all okay at the moment. Thankfully, I, I just have the odd hot spell, so if I look, look flushed at any point, that's probably it. Although my camera's probably not good enough to pick it up, even if I do. Uh, but that is why over the next week it will probably be slower than normal. But there will hopefully be lots of good stuff to do after that, because I know Kabuto Sumo's been shipped already, and that's going to be like my first dexterity style game. Really excited by it. And... Yeah, I'll be looking to get unboxing, reviews, gameplays for that one. And, like I said on in the past video of the number of games on the water, I am expecting somewhere at six, seven, eight games this month by the end of September. So, again, hopefully there'll be lots of good stuff coming up. Now, diving into the meat of this video, so my favourite board game inspired video games. The first one I'm going to go with is Hand of Fate. Now, Hand of Fate is sort of a hybrid and for me does a really good job of adapting the most board game mechanics to a video game space because it combines deck building with sort of video, traditional video game style combat. So, the, your dealer is laying out dungeon, a card based dungeon, you move between the cards, turn them over, then they unveil different types of events, they could be combat events, they could be shopping, they could be friendly people, they could be if you were mini games of skill you for example, board, all different types of things. Have your You're, you've got we're risk reward reward because a lot of these game games of skill are between resources solved by, they will have a number of success cards, a number of non uh, failure cards which they will shuffle together and you have to pick them to succeed or fail. Then if it is a combat card, it goes into tra traditional video game territory where you have a much simplified version of like the combat from the Arkham games, from the Batman Arkham games, which I loved. This is far more simple, particularly in the first game. There is a sequel, Hand of Fate 2, which is basically the same gameplay. 
just obviously with different decks and enemies and things it is a lot easier the second one the first one is very difficult i Some have managed to beat be all the sort of standard game. enemies but i've never beaten the dealer himself in the first one your own but yeah it's it's a game i really really love and i think it actually had a board game adaptation which i i may check out i don't know how well that's rated but yeah it's just a really really good hybrid really fun lots of decision making lots of character development you're getting gear and skills and magic and things like that so it's definitely one i would recommend you checking out next one on the list is again kind of a double act so it's hitman go and there is a lara croft go as well so in this one you i mean even the loading screen shows a board game box being open with pieces and as you're going around your mission is to get from the start to the end you may have certain characters you need to assassinate or certain objectives to fulfill throughout the level there is uh, generally uh, an ability or a, an a achievement linked to getting through the level without killing anyone which is really satisfying when you manage to figure out that puzzle and it's basically just like a little puzzle game where you're moving your piece and the other like the security guards might turn around they might move you might use a stone to distract them you might have a disguise and obviously they add in lots and lots of mechanics over the course of the game and by the end of it it's very very complicated lots of things going on same for Lara Croft Go, it's exactly the same sort of gameplay, just obviously with that Tomb Raiding theme. For me, personally, I probably enjoyed the Hitman one more, purely because I felt like the theme better suited the mechanics. Even though, generally, I prefer the Tomb Raider games to the Hitman games, but obviously that's my subjective opinion. You may be completely different. I think they're on, certainly on PlayStation, not 100% on Xbox, but they're usually two or three quid. Uh, particularly in the sales so it's certainly one that is a bit fun quick and easy to dive in and the levels are really really interesting and a really fun puzzle going into the next one what will i talk about next so slay the spire obviously has gained a lot of hype in the last year quite rightly so if you've followed uh, alex's board game co channel at all you will have know you will know that he did a live stream not long ago where he was playing Slay the Spire. I didn't, you couldn't watch him, but he was playing it whilst doing the stream. So I think he, it was something he could focus on if there was sort of a lull in the questions, for example. But again, it's a deck building one similar to Hand of Fate, although you don't have the deck building in this one represents the combat, unlike Hand of Fate, which has video game style combat. This is more traditional. You play your cards to block or attack or draw more cards and when you win battles you add extra cards you can buy more cards you can upgrade your cards there's lots of different characters different enemies and again this one has got a board guide board game adaptation coming to crowdfunding i think it's kickstarter not game fan not sure when it was supposed to come end of april but it's been delayed so we're just waiting on that one but that is very exciting and yeah it's just a really really fun game and a very good introduction to the sort of board game mechanics as well but you have different levels of bosses you have ultra bosses you have like little event puzzles going on it's it's just an excellent excellent adaptation of a board game and coming into the next one and probably the inspiration for this video really and unfortunately it's a game i've only got on ps3 so i don't have any footage to overrun so you are going to be stuck with me for a minute and that is valkyria chronicles in particular the one i played was number three which you can get remastered on on the current gen and you can also get number four is out but i've only just finished playing number three on ps3 because i'm sort of going back through the backlog and it's kind of similar to XCOM. It almost feels like a hybrid of XCOM and Hogs of War. In that if you played the original Hogs of War, it's cut, or like a 3D Worms game, where you are 
you have complete freedom, you can run around the map, you have stamina gauges depending on what characters you have which determine how far you can go, there's different terrains and things you can hide behind and then you have different loadouts and weapons and it's basically like a, not like a hidden dice roll but you have different accuracy values where certain shots may not hit, I suppose there is hidden dice rolls depending on how accurate your shot, shot is. But again, it's one that when I was playing it, I was like feeling constantly that this would make a great board game. Probably more in the wargaming style of things where obviously the stamina gauges would translate directly to the games where you're measuring how far your character can move. And then you just got a, you've got all the different stats and damage outputs and defense outputs of the different types of enemies, the different types of units that you have. You upgrade them, you get different weapons and things like that, and I just absolutely adored it. So, yeah, is if you like XCOM that sort of thing, I would definitely check it out. It's got that sort of Japanese, almost anime art style going over the top of it with a, a surprisingly heart-wrenching story at times. Uh, obviously, it's based in war, and it does... A, pretty good job of actually adapting that and there are times I got a bit tearful so I and I always love a game that makes me tearful so I'd certainly recommend that. The next one on the list is a game I've talked before in terms of a video game that I really really hope gets a board game adaptation or should I say a second one it has had an adaptation but based on the reviews it's not very good, and based on what I've read about it, it focuses can entirely on the wrong side of the game, and that is Banner Saga. I absolutely adore this game. Obviously, it, the combat in particular is perfectly suited for a board game adaptation. It's grid-based. You've got different units, different enemies with different skills, different strengths, different... Uh, well, just different everything, different abilities. They developers they gain experience you get stronger you get more abilities it's just it's screaming out for a proper banner saga dungeon crawl and then you've got this really interesting sort of camp stage where you're you're leading your caravan across the world you have all these difficult decisions to some of them are just dialogue decisions that are throw away but and with the gameplay that hopefully you're seeing over the top of this, I recorded that from right at the beginning of the game, so that is sort of just throwaway dialogue. Whereas obviously later in the game you will have, do you, you find some refugees? Do you give them food? Do you invite them into your caravan? But if you invite them into your caravan or share supplies, then there's less that goes round. You might have people in your caravan that starve. And there's all these sorts of different decisions that were really satisfying, it had a really great story over the, the duration of the three games that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. I played through them all multiple times and yeah, I just really, really, really want a, a, a well, like a Kingdom Death style or a Townsfolk Tussle style adaptation with the, the combat being the focus, with the caravan being a bit in between, whereas the board game that already came out sounded like the caravan stage was the focus and then the combat was just a little tiny grid based diversion. And the last one on the list isn't really a board game video game at all, it's my second favourite game of all time. If you saw my video on my top 10 favourite video games you'll know that, but it is Final Fantasy VIII, which obviously is not a board game video game at all. But I want to talk about probably my favourite minigame of all time, and that is Triple Triad, which is a card game where you have cards for each monster, for the, the summons, for the characters. They all have point values, that top left, right, bottom, that you can match up, and you've got to place a card with a higher value than your opponent in that direction, and then you flip it over. Whoever has the most cards flipped over wins and you get their card to build your deck. As you go through there are extra rules that get added in terms of if you have the same values or if 
the two back, you put it against two other cards and if the two sides add up to the same value, then you flip over Bay. There's also the infamously awful random rule, because by the time that kicks in, you've probably got a whole host of terrible cards with a great hand, potentially, of strong cards, but then random comes in, gives you one great card, a bunch of terrible ones, you inevitably lose, and then you lose your great card and can never get it back, which is horrible. <laughs> But as long as you can avoid the random rule as best you can, then it is so much fun. The music is incredible. And yeah, playing that as probably an 11, 12 year old. I didn't draw the line, the comparison to how that would rep be represented in a board game. To be honest, when I played it two years ago on the remaster, I didn't draw those parallels. Uh, but now I've just gained even more greater appreciation of that. And yeah, part of me just really wants a physical version of that as well. And they're the main ones on my list, really. Again, comment down below for your favourite ones. And I guess I'm going to call the video there. Now, I will leave you with the opening FMV sequence from Final Fantasy, because it's probably my favourite video sequence of all time, and certainly the one that impacted me the most, because I remember turning the game on and just having my jaw on the floor the whole time. So it's the opening sequence to Final Fantasy VIII, and I'll see you again. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Look after yourself, stay safe, and have a good one. Bye-bye now.